everybody, this is Chris, content creator of Tiny Home Tours and the Off Grid Schooly Brands. Right now, you are actually in my school bus conversion that's still under construction. It's been about a year and two months. But today, I want to talk to you about today's video sponsor, that is Displate. During the construction of the schoolie, I have a chest freezer built into my kitchen area. That is because I'm making this school bus to be able to be off the grid for a month, month and a half at a time, which means food storage. So I had an original design to put this chest freezer in here, and I had a bulkhead area that I didn't know how I was going to fill. I started looking online for posters, artwork, and then I found Display, which does metal posters. Being that, you know, I'll be traveling a lot, it will have a lot of vibration I'll need to hold up over time, I decided to give these metal posters a try. For the bulkhead itself, there is four separate pieces. For these uh, medium-sized uh, displate metal posters, uh, combines into four, and that's what I ended up using for the bulkhead of the freezer. I actually designed the bulkhead to fit those in there perfectly, and it turned out fantastic. It really ties the, the kitchen together, and I just drove 1,200 miles back home to visit family. Plates didn't fall off. They were great to go, uh, didn't make any noise, so I highly, highly suggest looking into displate for your tiny home because what you can do is it uses a magnet and you're able to switch this around so if you want to change up your artwork if you want to you know put something different up you can always switch the plates and I anticipate on doing that right now I love the design it works really well with the black and white theme that I'm doing uh, for for my school bus conversion but teaming up with Displate to give you a coupon code. That'll be down in the description below. You can go to Displate.com. They have over 160,000 different designs you can look from. It seems as though they, they concentrate a lot on gaming, but you can get a lot of this abstract art like I got. Uh, it goes well with the natural wood that I was going with and the blacks and whites uh, that I'll be painting the interior once I get some more work done with the bus. But I'd like to thank Displate for sponsoring today's video, and I'd like to thank you for watching Tiny Home Tours. Uh, enjoy today's video. Hello, we're Ben and Rebecca from Seward, Alaska, and we just bought an adventure truck to drive around the world. We're going to be YouTubing it as we travel east to ship across to Europe and then Africa, Asia, Australia, South America, yep. Central America, back and then home. Right back right home right. to Alaska. It's a great starting and ending point. So, what? So, after four years of hanging out in Alaska, we wanted something new and decided to drive the same Class A motorhome around North America for about three years. Yeah. And then we're itching for something new again. Well, we've always been international travelers. Yes. We've done 43 countries already and wanted to be able to do it as more of a lifestyle rather than just vacationing and be able to go and experience cultures and what we're looking to do is really like spend some time yeah. and live a place. It's not a race around the world. No. So we're looking at at least five years driving around the world and uh, we decided to drive because it's just really nice to be able to bring your home with you. You don't and have to live out of two suitcases. We have yep. a little dog and so she always has some stability yep. and a home and so do we. And then we can stay as long as we want. We're not worried about paying for a place to live. And Living in a world with a constant state of new, I think is consistent. really appealing. So we have the consistency of our camper, yep. but new places, new cultures, new experiences every single day until yeah. we make it back home. That's what life is about for us. I'm going to show you the interior of the rig. So we'll start right at the front door with the stairs. These are detachable stairs. You actually just pull them up and fold them down and toss them in, which I'm not gonna do because they're heavy. <laughs> So honestly, when we first bought the rig, I was a little worried about the stairs because we're used to having the kind that just slide out uh, when you open the door. And aside from the fact that I've gotten really strong for lifting them up into the cab all the time, they're not that bad. They're extremely sturdy. And uh, I've scraped my heels on the back a few times getting used to, because they're never consistent in how far they're stretched out. So you're constantly like, judging how to step down them but otherwise we really like them we are going to install my dad can weld and has a welder and he's going to weld a little ladder here for us ben and dad will do that so that the most annoying part of having these stairs is you run up to the front you're all set to leave and you think shoot 
we forgot our drinks or I need my purse or whatever it is. And then you have to drag them back out and set them up. So a little quick ladder to jump in and out is gonna be great. So this is our control panel for the EV and I'm not gonna go into too much detail other than to say all of our fuses are here and they're color coded. So the things that we need to turn off while we're driving are red and the things that we leave on all the time are black. Uh, these are to turn our batteries on and off, kind of like what you see on a boat. And then around the corner are the controllers for our solar panel. They're kind of in an awkward place, but you only need to check them a couple times a week, so it works out. Well, we have an inverter, and so we're pretty faithful about turning it on and off when we're using it. And we haven't actually drained anything down yet. I mean, we've had it for about six weeks now, so I'm sure that it will come. The big thing that we keep doing is leaving the water pump on when we go to drive the vehicle, which could really be a mess <laughs> if something got bumped. So we're, we're, ch we're double checking each other now so that we don't forget anything. See, you'll notice that we have this acrylic cover over our fuse box. The seller actually had taken that down and we put it back up because we kept bumping the refrigerator uh, switch. And so I woke up one morning after doing the laundry and I had drug the laundry basket back in and bumped the switch. And I had to throw away everything in the fridge because it had gotten hot. Because it's summertime right now, so there's no, no room for error. And after the third time, we were like, okay, this isn't working and we put the acrylic back up. <laughs> so that's been the biggest problem we've had. <laughs> so we're in the interior now and I'll show you around and give you an idea of what it's like to live in a 13 by six and a half square foot box. The dinette is kind of unique in that our refrigerator is underneath one of the bench seats. And so what we have taken to doing, if you have to get into this every single time you want to while you're parked, it's a real pain. So we just leave it up like this all the time. It takes away one of our seats, but then we can access our refrigerator whenever we want to. Uh, the other side of the dinette has kind of become my workstation. Ben tends to sit on the bed and work, but I sit right here with my computer and I can have the windows open and it's breezy and I have a little place to type. So this is kind of my office space. And once in a blue moon, we actually sit here and eat. We usually, since the weather's been so nice, we've been eating outside for the most part. The refrigerator is an isotherm brand and it's a 12 volt fridge. And honestly, it's probably gonna be one of the first major things we fix in this vehicle or change. Um, the main challenge is its location. <laughs> it would be fine if you were weekending in this or just, you know, taking small vacations, but this is our home. We're living in here full time and this setup just isn't practical, even though we've kind of compensated as we've learned to live in the space. So we're looking at doing like a Vitrofrigo or a Webasto uh, stainless steel, the kind that pull out on drawers. And it's just a matter of deciding the right one and putting the funds towards it. That brings me to another point. We have a freezer in here as well. And so uh, the freezer is built into the cabinetry and it's a nice deep freezer. It goes all the way down to about here, which is wonderful for us because we're from Alaska. So we brought salmon, halibut, caribou with us and we don't have to buy meat at the grocery store right now. What we would probably end up doing is putting a fridge freezer combo here. We'd have to raise the cabinetry about six inches to accommodate it, but we've got room for that. And then they would just be pulled out here. This particular, this is also an isotherm, but it can be a fridge or a freezer. The one under the dinette can only be a refrigerator. And the other challenge that we're having with our fridge, and maybe because it's summertime, is that sometimes it's really cold and it freezes our food. And sometimes it's just like the right temperature for a refrigerator. <laughs> so it's very, uh, back and forth. You never know what it's going to be like when you open it. So I did mention that this is my workstation and we have several sources of mobile income. We have some real estate. We also have our YouTube channel and the brand that goes with it. And we've expanded that into something that's really generating good revenue for us. And then I also have a background in medicine. And so I work as a 
medical expert about 15 hours a week as a contractor and so that's what I do when I sit here it's either that or else I also manage Ben edits all of our videos and records all of our content for YouTube I handle a lot of the social media and building a new website and working on some merchandise and things like that so we didn't put all of our eggs in one basket we kind of did a variety of things and if you're interested in learning more about mobile income we are working on a class that will be on our website soon like a digital course that you can take to learn about what you might be able to do for mobile income because everybody has different skills and, and qualifications that they can apply a little bit more about the dinette before we move on this space down here we let our dog eat down here and it's really nice because she kind of has a little space where she hops up and sits there and she's out of everybody's way and she has a great view of the whole RV but she does not underfoot so she likes that I also have been trying to get rid of baskets so we're down to just one basket that we keep all of our electronics in when we're not working but one of the baskets I got rid of and I made I put everything in this ottoman instead. So it has our extra pair of shoes, some extra toilet paper, and a fan in it. And then behind our ottoman, this is a new feature for us, but we actually have this five gallon water jug and then we found an electronic pump. So I'll show you, cause I can pour some into the dog food. You just push a button and it puts the water out. Uh, really nice because it doesn't take up cabinet space or counter space then to have something sitting on the countertop with your water in it. And uh, we have really come to like that. So we got this at Walmart and it's Primo brand. So it's a Primo bottle and a Primo pump. They have hand pumps too, but this one was only like 10 bucks more and it's electric. And it runs off of um, 12 volt, a USB plug in to 12 volt. So we actually have a little 12 volt charger back here and it just stays plugged in when it needs to be. This also makes into another bed. So the table comes down and covers part of it. And then we have this little piece of wood stored back here for the, for the other part to make, you know, one person could comfortably sleep here. This is about 36 inch dinette. Last thing on the dinette, we do have some storage underneath the side that I use as a work desk and we keep our dirty laundry there. <laughs> We also have our inverters and a lot of uh, the electronic stuff and we keep a movie case and toilet paper under there. We've now moved into the kitchen, which just to kind of give you a sense of space, this is a 60 inch countertop. We've got our kitchen sink here. and. When I saw the pictures of it before we bought the rig, I was kind of like, whoa, that's got to get replaced. But it's actually a really deep kitchen sink and we've come to like it very much, especially because we can put this over the top of it and nobody knows if we have dirty dishes. <laughs> I already showed you the freezer that we have and it's kind of nice the way that, you know, that it just converts into countertop space. One of our favorite things about this rig is it's a single source of fuel. So we use diesel and that includes for our, our stove top. This is a Wallace uh, diesel stove top and we're still kind of getting used to it. There is a little bit of winterizing fluid in it when we bought the rig and so it's kind of caused a few challenges. Don't recommend doing that if you have a diesel stove top. And then we've also, because we've been going through Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado, have been learning how to use the high altitude setting. But if you heat one side, you heat the other just a little less. And we've cooked rice and meat and pasta. It's working great. And I really like that it's a glass countertop. We definitely have embraced outdoor living and cooking in this rig just because we essentially have 78 square feet of living space. But also the diesel stovetop does really heat up the EV and um, so we have a barbecue and we have a little box that we pull out of the garage that has cooking utensils and pots and pans that we've set aside just for the barbecue. And we have a screened in room that's about a hundred square feet. So <laughs> we actually have more space out there and really have embraced living out of the EV instead of in the EV, which is what we've done with our past rigs. Well, we'll talk a little bit about the cabinetry next. And actually I would say we probably aren't utilizing our cabinetry to full capacity yet, but uh, we're still kind of getting settled in. 
One of the things you have to think about if you downsize to something like this is don't be afraid to try doing new things. And I'll show you an example of what I did. So this is one storage cabinet that we have and our pots and pans are in the back and then mixing bowls and colanders, kiwis. And we put all of our silverware in just one little wooden box. One of the things I do love about this rig is they put sliding drawers in and this means that I can really utilize this space to the maximum. So we just reorganized this again. All of our utensils and measuring cups and scissors are here, our glassware, and we we're having a really hard time finding a place to put tall bottles. So now they go here. And then this is our produce basket. And it's actually working out really well because it was sitting on the dinette and I moved it under here and it actually stays nice and cool but I can just easily slide this drawer out and grab whatever I want. Our bananas are, have started lasting again like they normally do in a house <laughs> since I did this so I love that. I would never have thought to put produce in a cabinet but it stays nice and cool back there. Another thing that we've done, and I really think it has helped us embrace the small space, are baskets. And we literally just have baskets everywhere. But when you're in a vehicle that moves all the time, or a house that moves all the time, it's really a challenge to keep things in their right place. So if you do the baskets, everything will fit. We got all of our baskets at Michael's this summer. We literally sat out in the parking lot. We went in, I measured everything. I went in and bought what I thought would work, brought it out here, put it in. The ones that didn't work, I sent Ben back inside to change them out. <laughs> and we just kept working at it until we got to uh, the point where we were utilizing the most space and everything fit. So uh, this is kind of like, kitchen side and food. We have our spices up here and our towels and vitamins there. And then these are our personal baskets. So I have one, Ben has one, Shelby has one, and then these are some more vitamins. One of my favorite things about the baskets that we chose for the kitchen side is that you can actually see what's in them. So I know that these are all of my dried fruits to make my fruit bowls. And these are like, cookies and candies and all the naughty things you don't want to get into. <laughs> um, ben, then right here, this is everything Ben needs to make his coffee in the morning. So he just pulls it out and it's all right there for him. And this one has everything we need for dinner. So our dishes and our cups and our napkins. And you can see it all. The last thing I'll show you about our cabinetry is what we've done. Um, I think a lot of people are going this route as they build tiny homes now, but we have traditional cabinetry in here, not RV specific cabinetry. So we had to figure out a way to make sure that these doors didn't swing open and everything fly out while we're driving. Uh, the previous sellers had put these on and then they wrapped bungee cords and hooked onto here um, to make sure that this didn't slide out if they went down bumpy roads. And um, after about 10 pinched fingers on the bungee cords, I was like, can we do something different? <laughs> so Ben went to the hardware store and just grabbed these from Murdoch's and an eye and hook kind of thing. And so now we have a backup. We do both of them. Um, but I like this a lot better because if you forgot something in the cabinets when you're getting ready to leave and you had to unbungee them, it was just very frustrating, whereas this is a quick, simple little thing. He did these to all of our cabinets, all of the ones here in the kitchen, and our clothing cabinets in the bedroom. So the last cabinet here, we just have baskets with um, cleaning supply. Well, not really cleaning supplies, actually. Those are elsewhere now, but all of the storage solutions that you need. And then another drawer that has more of like our a blender and our kettle and those sorts of things. And, it, and it's a drawer as well, so you can pull it out. And we store some food in there too. One thing that was really important to us was to actually have a real trash can and not have like a, a plastic sack hanging on the door or something. So I did find this one at Bed Bath & Beyond and it pops open. It fits perfectly in this space. And then right next to it, we have a foldable 
step stool so that you can climb into the bed because it's a pretty high step up into this bed. I can't do it without the step stool. <laughs> we do have some hooks here. So again, I get one, Ben gets one, Shelby gets one. We cleaned up since you guys were coming today, but normally there's towels and clothes hanging here. And one point of contention in the EV is my jewelry. I picked this out on Amazon and it's great because all my jewelry fits in it, but Ben feels it's a little intrusive into the shared space. So we're gonna eventually do some cabinetry above the dinette and this will go into the cabinetry instead. But I like it because every morning I can see my jewelry and I have it all organized by color. I'm not OCD at all. <laughs> And since we're over here, we'll talk a little bit about this control panel. We do have one of the fantastic fans and it is absolutely a lifesaver. If you're building any kind of tiny home, EV, RV, schoolie, it's an absolute must because you get in here and it's kind of warm and you just can turn it on and make it so that it sucks the air out. You open your other windows and it pulls cool air through. You can even adjust it so that if it gets warm, like to a certain temperature, it'll auto click on. And then when it cools back down, it'll click back off. Um, this is the control for our heater and we have a diesel heater in here again one source of fuel But it's we use it right now to see if we're getting it cooled down with the fan <laughs> and we have two Places where the diesel heater blows air into the rig and you turn those on right here on this fan heater switch Well, we'll just move right on into the bedroom, which isn't even a step anywhere. <laughs> this is a true queen sized bed and the previous seller chose this. He bought a really high end mattress actually, which we're grateful for because we had budgeted for a new bed. When you spend a significant amount of time in bed every night and then this is also your living room because our television's mounted over here, it's important that it's comfortable. So during the day, we kind of use this like a day bed. We'll prop up against the back wall and then in the evenings and nighttime we lay down um, so it wasn't really our decision that it was a high quality bed but we would have gone that route if it hadn't already been that way and the fact that it's a queen up against the wall makes it feel really large almost like a king-sized bed we're not crowded in here at all we're very comfortable and that was something that we always kind of fought in our last rig because it was a RV queen and Ben's really tall. So his feet were always hanging off the end and <laughs> he wasn't really comfortable. He's perfectly comfortable in this bed and that was really important for us. The storage space in here is definitely a premium and we basically have utilized the storage above the bed for our personal effects like clothes. Really that's all it is up there. This side has like Ben's socks and my bathing suits and tank tops and the other side we each have one 18 inch basket and then we share a basket that we put all of our delicates in. <laughs> It is really a challenge because that's not very much space, even for Ben, like uh, that's, that's pretty limited space, but miraculously we managed to fit everything in. Now we do swap seasons. So in the, in the garage, we have a Rubbermaid tote where we've put all of our winter clothes and we just keep our summer clothes out right now and then we'll trade out. And I did sneak in a couple of baskets over there. I keep my makeup and my hair clips and my scarves because there just wasn't anywhere for them to go and I need them. <laughs> so they'll go into this, you know, fix all cabinetry. We're going to put it above the dinette. <laughs> we do have a 12 volt charger above our bed and it has USB ports in it. So that's where we plug our phones in at night and then they just get stored up here in the cabinets. And we have a 12 volt DVD uh, TV combo back here on a swivel. And we're actually, we don't have a 12 volt plug-in back here for it right now. Ben's gonna install that when we're at my dad's in a, f well, actually this week. So we're just plugging it into regular electricity and you have to turn the inverter on. So last thing in the bedroom is we do actually have storage underneath the bed and you can see the opening for it right here, but it goes 
the full length of the cabinets back here. So all the way under the bed, we have um, vitamins and medicine stored clear back in there, extra set of sheets. That silver t Rubbermaid that you see, we call the catch-all box. <laughs> um, when we don't have anywhere for something to go, it gets thrown in there until we can organize. And then we each have our computer bags sitting there. And we have really cool like lap desks that we can use on the bed and we store those there as well. And kind of a very basic system of putting bungee cords in front of it so nothing falls out while we're driving. Oh, I thought I'd show you these desks really quick because they are pretty cool. My mom actually found these and online and gave them to us, but they're fully adjustable. Like you can change this angle, you can change this angle, you can change this angle. And so it makes it so you can sit on a couch and type, or you can lay in bed and angle it up like this. And it has a little lip to hold your computer. You can change the angle of this part. It's just a great tool for us because when you fold them up, they take up absolutely no space, but they're very versatile and make it so you can work just about any space and actually be comfortable and not have that hot computer sitting on your lap. <laughs> so last thing before we move into the bathroom, I'll show you our windows because they're pretty cool. Uh, we have, so these are double paned acrylic windows. You can get them in glass as well, but ours were acrylic. They're made by Dometic. And the awesome feature of it is if you go down, you have your screen. If you go up, you have a blackout blind so you can stealth camp number one, but number two on the back side of this, it's reflectic. And so it actually helps to keep it cool in here. Whenever we're driving, we put all the windows up so that no, no sun comes in and it's much cooler since we started doing that when we get back here after driving. The way that the window part works is pretty cool because right now I have this set on event setting. So it's just like enough space for my fingertips to fit, but a little bit of air comes in. So then if I push that button, I can push it to three different settings. So one, it's very temperamental. One, two, or three which is all the way open. And I love this setting when it's raining because, you know, in regular RV windows, you have to close all the windows when it's raining. And in the summertime, that gets really hot. With this one, we leave it open. No rain comes inside. You don't have to run back to the EV because everything's gonna get wet indoors, but you also can keep the cool air flowing. And I can't say enough good things about these windows. The only complaint we have is the bugs can get in around the sides. So before we go to like Africa, we're gonna have to upgrade these windows to a different style where they seal all the way around. Yep, so we just drop this down and then the screen is present and you got your window and no buggies. Only other room in the house is the bathroom. And right now does not have a door, but we met a couple who have a schoolie bus this weekend and we really figured out how we're going to put a door so we'll do a slider up here and a slider down there and be able to slide this way and then close it have a door on the bathroom really important to me ben doesn't care but i just need a little privacy now and again <laughs> Uh, we do have two hooks out here. We actually only ever use this one. My towels hang here and Ben hangs his towel here. It's not practical to have your towel hanging in the doorway of the, of the house. So this is a wet bath. And one of the challenges I really struggled with when we first moved into the rig was you come in and it doesn't matter if you take your shoes off or leave them on in the summertime you're wearing sandals and your foot feet are dirty so you step into the potentially damp shower and your feet make a mess so then it's really not that fun once you are showering to shower 
with a dirty floor. Plus, there is nowhere for us to store our bath mat. So what I did was I bought a bamboo mat and I put that um, on the floor. It's raised so water can drain accordingly, but then I put our bath mat on top of it. So then when you step in and use the toilet, you have this nice cushy mat to stand on. And when you shower, you just take it out, set it in front of the bathroom door, and you don't have to step on the dirty doorway mat when you come out clean from your shower. Again, I'm not OCD at all. <laughs> We have a cassette toilet in here, and that's the first for us. We're used to RV toilets with a big black tank. This is a cassette toilet that has a five gallon cassette underneath, and Ben will show you that when we go outside. It has two knobs on it. One is to open and close the toilet so that you can drop the contents down into the storage cassette. The other one you turn, it'll actually add water to the bowl for you like in a normal toilet. It's definitely taken some getting used to, mostly because we have to empty it pretty often. It's five gallons and that lasts the two of us about three days. And a lot of people use their toilets, their cassette toilets, where they don't do certain business in here. That's just not really practical for us because we boondock out in the boonies a lot. And there's nowhere else to go to the bathroom for days on end. So you can go outside, but sometimes that's just not practical. So as far as the shower goes, love the shower. We have an incredible uh, water pressure in the shower. It's like taking a shower in a residential home. We did put an oxygenic shower head. These are available on Amazon and it's a traditional RV shower head where you can turn it on and off so you don't waste water and it just has a little stream when it's in the off position. But this really helps you to not use as much water. If you have low water pressure, it also makes it feel like a much stronger shower. So we don't really need it for the water pressure this time, but we use it for the water saving qualities. I was definitely worried about the bathroom because it was a wet bath, because it didn't have a door on it. <laughs> I worried about the water pressure. Typically RV bathrooms are not great, but this one I really have enjoyed. We have a great shower. You know, you can use the top of the cassette toilet to put your leg up and shave your legs. So a lot of people complain about that and they don't have place to do that in the shower. And now that we've gotten the flooring issue figured out, so it's not getting dirty every day, I'm really happy with it. I, I want a door. <laughs> I'm going to get a door really soon, but it's turned out to be a really nice bathroom and honestly like the least of my concerns in the EV for things to worry about. So the refrigerator is definitely a big concern just because I smashed my fingers in it so many times and gotten pissed off at it. So the people who designed the interior actually had lived most of their lives and apparently raised like four kids in a really small sailboat. And so these panels, and I never pronounce it right, it's like Luan, Luan, something like that. These are actually what they put in sailboats and it's it's actually high-end material and it's good quality. I'm not in love with the appearance. It's a really small space and I'm, I think if you lighten things up in a small space, it feels a lot more open, like you have more room, like you can just breathe better. Definitely the fact that there's five different colors of wood in here <laughs> uh, is something I'm going to take care of really soon. I've picked out some color for the cabinets, um, some wallpaper for some of the walls, and I'm going to paint some of the walls. Some will get left the way they are. It's going to be a very rustic look, what I'm going for, but so we'll keep with that theme because it does have kind of a cabinish or boat type feel, but just really lightening it up because we live in here full time and I think life's too short not to like the way that a place looks. The green countertops and the green cushions have got to go. I was raised on a farm and this is John Deere green and in my opinion John Deere green stays on the tractors. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing I can think of to share with you guys are the lights and we do have LED lights in here which is great because they draw very little electricity and they also don't get hot so we don't have that 
added heat in here from the lights. One other thing I didn't really talk about, and Ben will talk a little bit more, but we have a hot water system that actually it heats our water, it heats the space in here, and it can warm up the engine in the morning if it's cold. And it does so by working from a hot water tank in the back, and it runs water all through hoses in the cabin, and then it runs up to the engine in the cab. And there's actually a switch we've been talking about trying um, because any time that the engine is running, we're heating up water and we're also heating the interior. So you come back here and it's pretty darn warm after driving a long ways. You can actually turn that off so that, you know, maybe you heat it up for an hour so that you've got warm water when you stop for a shower, but it wouldn't be heating the interior. So that's something we're trying to figure out right now. Ben will be much better at explaining that outside, which I think I'll go ahead and transition and let him take over and share all of the cool components of the exterior of the rig. Well, let's jump into the uh, probably the more valuable part for me, which would be the truck and the chassis because a box can come and go. Obviously, the truck can come and go but this is the bones and we wanted a vehicle that we could literally drive around the world and would have no problems and we could source parts service uh, and accessibility being from alaska we have spent a lot of time getting out of alaska by a certain date and what if you want to stick around when we do get back for the holidays and then take off in january well now we have four-wheel drive so uh, this is a 2007 Mitsubishi Fuso FG140 factory four-wheel drive. Uh, this vehicle is a cab and chassis. You will see all different things on the back of these, but initially they were designed for industrial applications, mines, construction sites, getting people around in rough locations. It is 2007. Uh, one of the limitations to world travel is ultra low sulfur diesel and diesel exhaust. So right around 2007, 2008 is when you will find vehicles that are can run on regular diesel. And that's specifically why we went with a 2007 Fuso. In, uh, gosh, even in Mexico, it's hard to find ultra low sulfur diesel. So just working our way around the exterior of the truck, uh, this is sitting on 315 75 16 load range e tires the suspension has been upgraded there's a company out of oregon called earth cruiser and they make parabolic springs previous owner added rad flow shocks and then really cool so these vehicles come from the factory with dual mm. rear wheels and these are earth cruiser wheels so they're aluminum but in the back they're called super singles and when you're off-roading, one of the challenges is a rock getting jammed between your rear tires. So that is no longer an issue. And they designed the wheels so they are perfectly in line with each other. There is no offset at all. So it was quite the process figuring out what we actually wanted and let's be realistic, what we can actually afford. So being traveling YouTubers, we had the luxury of visiting with All Train Warriors and Sportsmobile, Earth Cruiser, ETL Overland, Global Expedition Vehicles, and in traveling, we have seen people with Expedition Vehicles. So it's been this process of figuring out what ultimately matters. And ultimately, it was the single fuel source, and Mitsubishi Truck Fuso is actually owned by Daimler, Daimler's Mercedes-Benz, which means we can source parts and service all around the globe. Well, I'm not gonna unlatch it, but here is where you tilt the cab forward. Keep it in mind when you tilt the cab forward, you need to empty out the cab so stuff doesn't fall and break the windshield from the inside out. Uh, this vehicle has 39,000 miles and not a lick of rust. So it is the perfect truck and chassis for us. Uh, the box is mounted on a uh, three-point uh, mounting basis. I don't know the exact details of it, but I do know that the cab and the camper 
uh, articulate and float independently of each other, which is a very desirable feature. Even though when you are off-roading, you will see the cab tilting uh, in crazy directions compared to the camper. Uh, 60 gallons of fuel capacity between two tanks. And then we have three Optima yellow top batteries, an onboard air compressor, which is duck, uh, tucked up underneath there. And here's where you uh, drain the moisture out of the compressor. And here's where we drain our gray water. It's right there. So there are not traditional uh, tanks. That is the uh, solar right there. It's charging up those three batteries. And we have 520 watts of solar on the roof. Moving on to the cassette toilet. This is you know, taking some getting used to, but having to slide this thing out and I'm um, you know, I'm not going to do it right now because I don't have gloves on and it's always good to uh, wear gloves, but you pretty much just slide this out and you go dump it. I would not recommend dumping this at your friend's house because it can get a little messy. My preference uh, would be at an outhouse or a bolt toilet in a campground where you can just have that long free fall and no splashes and no risk of plugging up a friend's toilet. All right, so there are some uh, aluminum storage boxes. Pretty much have to keep tools in these. On both rear quarters are some aluminum storage boxes. They are a fairly good size. We keep tools, leveling blocks, jumper cables. Uh, an insane amount of torque is required to torque these lugs on. So. Uh, there's this device in there that I have not used yet, but it's called a torque multiplier. So that's uh, something new that I have to still uh, experiment with. But keep in mind, we're only six weeks into this vehicle and it's just a process. And back here, we have a spare tire on one of the Earth Cruiser wheels. A nice stout rear bumper. Uh, and we're also still able to maintain departure angle which is crucial when you're off-roading. LED lights on the exterior of the camper. We call this space the white hole. Uh, we don't have much on the inside, so we have to take advantage of this. Uh, we liked using file boxes because we could uh, manipulate them like a game of Tetris to optimize as much space and they're kind of reinflated, but these space saver bags are awesome. We have an entire you know, Rubbermaid tote full of clothes that have been uh, vacuum packed in those space savers. Little barbecue taking you know, advantage of the climate. Screen rooms back here, but it's just one giant catch all. Yeah, it is a little difficult getting in and out, but the water heater is actually back there. And we need to build like a little bit of protection around it because the uh, PEX is exposed. So we have soft things protecting it. Hence why it's in our best interest to turn the water pump off when we're driving. Well, that's about it. We try to strategically do things. So like when you go in here, all stuff needs to have a place. But for now, we're not going to uh, disassemble everything. So just get stored right there. A backup camera that uh, is integrated into the Garmin GPS. And if you get down here, there's the exhaust for the uh, diesel SPAR uh, heater. So you know, I think Beck mentioned it on the inside, but we are single fuel source aside from solar and electricity. And uh, that means the diesel off the tanks fires the stove and this heater. Swinging around the uh, driver's side of the rig, the other aluminum box that primarily has oil, filters, coolant, fluids like that. The other 30 gallon tank, um, the two engine batteries. And what we're thinking, you know, we got a lot of stuff in the, you know, the, half the fun is dreaming, but it would be nice to put a uh, decent size diesel generator right here take away from some of this fuel tank, add a little more space to that fuel tank, 
and then add an air conditioner. You'll also notice between the uh, cab and the camper, there isn't a pass-through, and we are definitely gonna get a pass-through before we start the world travels. It's just a matter of safety and self-preservation, being able to bug out and jump into your vehicle and drive. It just gives you a little bit better odds of making it out of a dangerous situation. We have good old fashioned manual locking hubs. Uh, very you know, tried and true uh, systems on this vehicle, which is what you need when you're gonna be on the uh, farthest reaches of the globe. So it's a unique vehicle to drive because there is no hood. And you also have the uh, effect of being like a bus driver with the location of the steering wheel. Getting in, it is a little bit of a rhythm. So right foot, left foot. And uh, just from your perspective here, this is where we shift into four low. The uh, switch on the dash for four high is right here, which is a uh, nice feature because if you have full time four wheel drive, you're pushing all four wheels all the time which is uh, gonna draw up your fuel economy. We're getting about 12 to 13 miles a gallon on uh, the diesel, and that's really not all that bad. Uh, there are some nice luxury features. Power windows, power locks. I guess this is a uh, vehicle still designed for uh, many different applications. A 2007 with an ashtray. Uh, manual transmission is nice. First gear is a uh, complete granny gear. Second is completely adequate to take off in. AM FM CD, we're gonna change that over to something with Bluetooth. Uh, factory air conditioning, so it works great. But driving down the highway is really not that bad. It gets a little bouncy on dirt roads, but it's an off-road capable vehicle, so that's to be expected. Well, thanks for joining us today on the tour of our tiny home expedition vehicle. I uh, remembered that we haven't shared the name of our vehicle <laughs> and all these vehicles have to have a name. Of course. And the name has to be symbolic. So we chose, it's going to sound weird at first, Denali Faraday. <laughs> now, the Denali part is very symbolic, uh, a tribute to our uh, home state of Alaska. And we're very proud of our home state. You've been there plenty of times, Chris. You can completely understand. But Denali is the native word for the mountain formerly called McKinley, but the highest peak in North America. And it stands for the Great One. I'd say this is pretty damn great considering what we're about <laughs> to do. The Faraday part came it's because funny. it totally organic. But once we got in this rig, every time we step inside, kills our cell phone service <laughs> and especially once you roll up that uh, reflective window so we feel like we're in a faraday cage which is a uh, device that i guess in, i'll yeah. say that if there's an emp we're, we're probably, probably safe okay. <laughs> so be sure to check out his and hers vlogs on youtube we also post to instagram and facebook Yep. We're in the process of building a new website right now, and when that goes live, you'll be able to see it on our social media, but we're going to have some educational travel products on there, and uh, just more things that we think will help you make your dreams a reality, yeah. if traveling is what you'd like to do with your life. And if you have any more information, uh, you can look in the video description, uh, but also check out our channel, because... We've produced at least 20 videos in this new camper on our way from Montana to Colorado, and we're going to keep it up as we drive around the world.